Now here's another one, and I don't really even really have a verse for this, but you know, they'll say, oh, you know, but I didn't come down an aisle. I didn't, I didn't respond to an altar call to get saved. Do I really believe? You know, surely by now you can realize, you know, the circumstances don't change whether or not you believe. And whether or not you come down an aisle or respond to an altar call uh, does not change whether or not you believe. Now, my position on altar calls is, you know, I am not for altar calls. I am not for invitations. That's why we don't have them at this church. And I'll explain a couple of, I'll, I'll mention a couple of things about why I'm not for them. But at the same time, I am not against them. So I don't think that they should be called altar calls because, you know, we don't make altars anymore and the front of this room is not an altar uh, by a biblical definition. But let's say, let's say, let's, let's take away that fact. Let's say, you know, it's, somebody might say, oh, altar calls are wrong, then there's no altars, why are you calling it an altar call? Well, let's say we don't call it an altar call. Let's just say we call it an invitation. Uh, invitations to respond to the message or respond to the gospel presentation wrong and sinful in and of themselves. No, they're not because it's, it's just a, one method of which people can give people a, a, an opportunity to respond to whatever's being preached. So we can't say they're sinful. So we can't condemn people for doing that method. So I don't condemn anyone for doing it. But do I think it's a good idea? No. Am I for them? No. Do I plan on ever doing them? Uh, no. And, and why? Because, you know, one reason they give for doing invitations, or what, what was called altar calls, they'll say it gives people a chance to get saved. You know, maybe they'll be preaching a gospel message and they'll say this is a chance for people to respond, for people to uh, choose whether or not they want to respond to the message and believe on Jesus, on Jesus Christ. But two things there is, you know, or you, you could give them a chance to respond or you could just talk to them after after the meeting, right? You can just go over and talk to them and then that way there's a bit of interaction, there's a bit of engagement and then you don't have to give them that opportunity to respond and, and everybody that's already saved, you know, to go through that. And, you know, because sometimes people believe that, they'll give this altar call, this invitation and then they won't go up and talk to people afterwards because I don't know if you guys have ever been in churches that have altar calls or invitations but they give this invitation, oh, believe, if you want to accept Jesus Christ, come down the aisle or, or put up your hand. And then somebody does put up their hand. And then they're like, come down to the front, come down. This is your chance to believe. Don't be scared. But then after everything's all said and done, they don't just go up to that person and go talk to them. I mean, for me, if I saw people putting up their hand, wanting to be saved, I would be getting people and saying, hey, you know, this person put up their hand, go talk to them. This person put up their hand. But there's none of that because you have to have your eyes closed. So you have no idea who's put up their hand. So you don't even know who you can go talk to afterwards to give the gospel to. And the person that saw the hand doesn't even go up and talk to them after they've given the invitation. And to me, that, that is so wrong. I mean, if you see somebody respond, they want to be saved and then you're making them come down an aisle to be saved. And if they're not willing to, you don't then go talk to them afterward. And, and explain to them the gospel, it, it's almost foolish. So not only that, but, you know, we shouldn't even be giving, uh, I mean, church shouldn't even be geared towards unbelievers anyway. So, you know, the fact that the invitation is there to accept Jesus Christ as your saviour, I mean, it would only make sense if you're really gearing that public uh, meeting to unbelievers, and then you make let's say 99% of your church is, are believers and you take you know, 10 or 15 minutes to have this altar call, you know, now you're making all these believers sit through this 15 minute altar call invitation when, when they're all saved. You know, why not give them their 15 minutes back and then use that 15 minutes to just talk with the person that actually needs salvation. So to me, it's, it's not a very effective method because you can just talk to the person and then, it, you know, it gears the meeting towards unbelievers, which I don't believe is the right thing. I think this meeting should be geared towards believers, building you up, giving you uh, some good, sound teaching that will uh, strengthen your faith in the Bible and in Jesus Christ. But, you know, they might say, well, it's, you know, we're not gearing it towards unbelievers. You know, it's, it's, it's a chance for a, a, a believer to actually respond to the preaching that's geared towards believers. You know, it's a chance for them to reflect on what's getting preached and, and respond to that. So that's not, that's not a wrong thing. I don't have anything against that. Um, that's one reason why they do it. But a couple of things to mention that 
why I would not do it. But number one is, you know, why does somebody need to walk down an aisle to respond to the sermon? You know, why, why can't they just respond to it in their chair? Why can't they just think about it afterwards and, and, and be exhorted to respond to it and respond to it in their own time? Because, you know, number two, a person might hesitate to rep respond to the sermon if they think they have to walk down an aisle to do it. You know, they think, well, I haven't really responded to it because I didn't go down and, and kneel at the front and respond to it, when they could equally just as much respond to it in their own chair, in the, in, in the, in the, in the quietness of their heart. So one thing I think is, are we stopping people from responding to it because they think, oh, I haven't really responded to it until I'm willing to go down the front, whereas they shouldn't have that hurdle to jump over in order to respond to something that God is telling them to do in their life. Uh, another thing is number three, you know, people might mistake this emotional experience and, you know, they say it's not about the emotion, but, you know, it's about the emotion because if it's not about the emotion, you know, why, why is there the music? Because they don't, ha they don't have an invitation and it's something upbeat and something, you know, whenever they have an invitation, it's always something slow, it's always something, something emotional because they, it's almost like even though they don't want to admit it, that's what they're unconsciously doing is they want to prompt this emotional response. And you know, one thing that's bad about that is people mistake this emotion, this emotional response as the Holy Spirit. But you know, you can have emotional responses without the Holy Spirit and emotional responses should be uh, in, 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 uh, in, uh, as a result of the Holy Spirit talking to you, not measuring whether the Holy Spirit is actually uh, moving in your heart or moving in the place so people mistake emotion for the Holy Spirit. And, and number two, you know, decisions in your life should not be made in the heat of emotion. You know, when you make a decision in your life, if you make it based on an emotion that you're having, it's probably not very deeply rooted and you're not really thinking about what you're deciding. You just feel something and you make this careless decision in your life that you're not really actually soberly thinking about. So, you know, I think good decisions and sound decisions in your life should not be made in the heat of emotion. And sometimes that's what invitations do, either after, a, you know, an emotionally stirring sermon or an emotionally stirring song or, uh, or presentation. And, you know, one thing that's bad about prompting somebody to make this careless decision in their life under the heat of emotion is some people might make very careless vows that they are not serious about keeping um, and that's actually sin if they vow something to God in the heat of that moment and they're not planning on keeping or they don't keep it it is sin to them you know let your yay be yay and your nay be nay you know because somebody might say oh you know they're, they're crying or whatever and they'll say oh God you know I'm so sorry I'll never do that again but if they're doing that in the heat of emotion do they really mean it you know is it is it better is it better for you to just say hey I'm going to strive to not do it again rather than making this vow making this promise that you'll never do it again when it's something you probably will do again. So I, that, this is a couple of reasons why I don't think altar calls are a good idea because I think first and foremost we shouldn't make people jump this uh, outward public fearful hurdle in order to make a response and also I think a response or a decision in your life should not be done in the heat of the moment, in the heat of emotion. It should be done soberly and with a clear mind.